Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world. You are welcome to the home of the English rugby team. It's Twickenham. It's round four of the Guinness Six Nations, and we hope it's a cracker between England and Ireland. Eighty-two thousand souls will pack their way into this wonderful arena on what has been a day of sunshine. It's cold, but not a bad spring day at all, and perfect conditions for what lies ahead. What's passed already was a victory for France against Wales last night at the Principality Stadium by 13 points to nine. Scotland getting the better of Italy earlier today by 33 points to 22. It all adds up to a table that looks like this. France are in the driving seat. Ireland and England, well, today one of them can step forward and maybe still have something of a say when we go to the final weekend next weekend. There is confirmation of the weather, nine degrees, it's cloudy. There is sunshine around as well, though, and a wind of just six miles an hour. It all adds up to absolutely perfect conditions for these sides. And what we hope will be a terrific day, a day where Ireland come to Twickenham knowing, well, that England have won four of the last five here against Ireland. That only loss, Ireland's only victory back in 2018 in the last five games. England, well, they've only lost two of their last 25 Six Nations home games. That gives you a sense of the size of the task that faces an Irish side that many find hard, well, many Irish people find hard to believe. Go into a game in Twickenham as favourites, marginal favourites, but favourites nonetheless. And at the week of the St. Patrick's Festival, well, there are many that have made the trip and many expats living in this part of the world who have made their way to Twickenham Stadium with both anticipation and a little bit of hope as Jonathan Sexton leads his side to the tunnel and to the entrance. And out he comes, Sexton becomes the oldest ever Six Nations captain, 36 years, 244 days. The oldest Six Nations captain on the books, and a man who extended his contract by 18 months, the final 18 months of what has been a glittering career, his 104th international cap. His ambition to lead Ireland at the Rugby World Cup and to hang up the boots at that juncture. Well, there's a lot to go between now and then. But he is a talisman for Ireland, no doubt about that. For Eddie Jones, well, all the talk this week has been about making Ireland firm favourites. But he's put a question mark in their heads. He said they've never met a team as physical as England in recent times. That has drawn a little bit of surprise from some quarters. The French are hardly shrinking violets. The All Blacks in November were no pushovers. But England led by that man, Courtney Laws, well, they are a side, no doubt, that is brimming with the ability to perform. The question is, can they perform as they make their way? So many little subplots in this one, aren't there? Laws leads an English side with half-backs that are relatively inexperienced. All the talent in the world, Marcus Smith, but he hasn't proved it at the highest level. Today, uh, alongside his scrum half, Harry Randall, an opportunity for that young man to really step up to the mark. Maru Itoje, there were question marks about his fitness, didn't take part in the captain's run yesterday. He's fit to play. Ty Byrne, well, he will face Itoje down and that another little battle that we look forward to. But before we get to the battles on the pitch that we look forward to, a word about, well, something that is drawn attention to every week of the Six Nations, and rightly so, rugby against racism. And, well, today, a day for escaping to sport, but England, and Irish Rugby Football Union stand together in solidarity with the Ukraine and its people and strongly condemn the invasion in their thoughts with those affected by the crisis.
Unquestionably an emotional reaction in Twickenham to that particular message. Now time for the anthems. Definitely a number of voices to be heard singing Ireland's call. Now the turn of England. The vast majority, of course, of the 82,000 that are here looking for a performance from this English side. An English side that uh, shows a number of changes, three in all from the Wales win. Jamie George in, in that front row alongside Genj and Sinclair. Itoje and Yules in the second row. Laws and Curry either side of Sam Simmons, who's in with Don Brandt moving to the bench. In the back line, just the one change, Joe Merchant in an outside centre alongside Henry Slade, Stuart Malins and no, the back three, but all about you feel that half-back partnership of Randall and Smith. As for Ireland, well, six changes for them from the side that defeated Italy. Key and Healy into the front row, no Andrew Porter, that's a big call for Ireland. James Ryan into the second row, and Peter O'Mahony retained at number six. Aki, Conway, Keenan, and of course Jonathan Sexton did not play against Italy, but are recalled for this game by head coach Andy Farrell. And don't forget, don't forget the Andy Farrell connection. 46-year-old, eight caps for England. It's a big, big day for that man, as it is for those replacements. 23-man game, we say it every week, they will all play their part. Alongside me, a former English international, 22 international no i should say 22 international caps 26 international caps short, right? so how are you doing Raul? yeah that guy there against sexton 104 caps today plays nine caps this guy can play any way you want to i mean distributing the ball from the forwards it's up to me it's up to marcus smith just i think to calm things down he is the key man today referee and officials is up on the ball but for me marcus smith this is his biggest game yet in his interna in international shirt. Absolutely has all the talent, has he got the control? Matthew Reynal will control the game, the Frenchman. Mike Adamson, yeah, Bruce will run the lines. Marius Jonker of South Africa is the television match official. It's the 139th international between England and Ireland. First played back in 1875. We're off and running at Twickenham. There's a real little bit of electricity in the air as it's gathered by Sam Simmons, gets his hands on the ball, 13th international cap for Simmons. Back in the number eight shirt, big plus for Eddie Jones this week. 
And, well, you feel if Ireland can just take a little bit of the emotion and control this game early, uh, they will get a foothold and England will require a bit to get back into it because England haven't had the most auspicious of championships so far. Ireland set about their work. Bundiaki, Gibson Park, Sexton on the loop, and he's watched and watched really well. I think it was Randall who made the tackle. That'll do the young scrum halves confidence the world of good. Caelan Doris. England through Marchant doing really well to get themselves in those lines of attack for Ireland. One of the Irish players in real trouble. I think it's James Ryan who's receiving attention and that's a head injury. We'll keep our eye on the game for the moment, but Ryan definitely in trouble. Maro Atoje, who we weren't sure was going to make this game, but the referee is going to stop because Ryan is too close to the play and they need to take a step back. Wow, both sides have come to play, Ireland in particular. Kicking long initially, Simmons taking the ball, a box kick from Randall, pretty long, and then Ireland just hit back. They didn't take the contact, they moved it out to the left. This is a HIA, gonna, obviously going to happen. Missed last, last week's game, very crucial for Ireland in the line-out area, calls it. And he doesn't look too well, to be honest. But you Something have got Henderson on the bench Maurice, if you're an Irish fan, and it, that ain't bad. Sorry? Uh, substitute to have, and you can just see it's just a clash of heads. You know, Rand Charlie Yules, I think it yeah. was. Yeah, it happens, know, and that's you know, know. number. It's not malicious at all. What, what you can watch in the top screen there is Harry Randall watching for that little you bit of a, a roll ball that Sexton likes to do. Pop it off to the I first know. player, and then comes back around okay. on the sweep. Randall was, uh, was cute to that, very good. OK, put it on the screen, Marius. There's going to be a look at this. You want to review a potential full play, right? Marius Jonker. Yeah, we review okay. a potential full play here. Thank I you. hope we don't go through what okay, we did in Italy. Now. We will have to see it a little bit slower. Here we go. Brad takes the ball in. Let's see, I, I, like... I... It, that is direct contact with the head. It is, and it's a yellow card. Because as the tackling, so, tackling so, man, you have uh, to be... With what I saw it's the difficult screen, because it's a split we, second, we've got a full two big lads running into each other. Uh, we will England, listen in. He's clearly upright, leading with the head. We've got a clear red contact. So I have no option. I will go for a red card oh against my word. the number five uh, white. Are you agree with that? Five white, I agree with the facts, yes. It's a high degree of danger, so I will go with a red card again, the five white. Are you agree with that? Yeah. But now we'll explain it. Five white. No, that the facts are up here. We've got a player upright, okay? So that's the responsibility of the player to not putting himself in a reckless position, which can seriously injure an opponent, okay? Right, he's upright, he, he runs the risk. It's a nice speed, high degree of danger, clear head contact, and we go for a red card again, the number five, please. Well, Charlie Hills is going to get a red card, and they are not going to like it, but based on the protocols, and we've been down this road in both hemispheres at all competition levels, if you lead with the head, if the first thing that happens is your head makes contact with the head of an opponent, that is going to be the conclusion of the referee, and he doesn't have any other option. He has no option at all. You have to have the responsibility being the tackling man. You've got a split second to do it, so you've just got to drop your size, in a sense. Um, it's incredibly difficult, as that guy knows, but by the letter of the laws we saw in Rome, when Italy went down to 13 guys because there was two hookers off, England are down to 14 men in the first minute of a very, very important game. An enormous moment in this game. Charlie Ewells is gone. James Ryan, well, I have to say it's another worry for James Ryan because that is a number of concussions he's had in the last 18 months and there'll be real concern about his welfare as well. These rules are brought in to try and help people like James Ryan. It's such a physical game, but it's an incredibly physical game where he plays and plays his trade. The crowd are booing, it doesn't matter, the referee is there, he's got help from his two touch judges, he's got help from Marius Juncker as a TMO, he says, do you agree with that? Everyone agreed with it, because, as you said, Ryle, these, these are the laws. It doesn't matter.
Jonathan Sexton to a cacophony of boos will look to get Ireland off the board. Nine hundred and sixty-three international points for Jonathan Sexton. His first opportunity of the afternoon. Up go the flags. Up go the voices of the Irish that are here. And Ireland lead it by three points to nil. But what an impact that decision from the referee Matthew Reynal has made on this game. Charlie Hulls, the bad second row is gone, and England are down to fourteen. Well, we'll see the character of this side now. They haven't been playing well, England. They don't quite know, and Daddy Jones, which way they want to play. Marcus Smith had pressure coming into the game, he's got even more pressure on him now. Well, what will the response be like? Gary Ringrose gathers the ball for Ireland. Sexton, Ty Byrne. Gibson Park, uh, Ty Furlong. Ireland's front row disrupted somewhat by Andrew Porter missing. Kean Healy, though, in for his 115th international cap. Conway chases and chases hard but the ball drops for Marchant and he ben, ben, John, runs John, it John, back John. with considerable pace and now England try to get themselves through a couple of phases and into some sort of shape taken quickly by Randall not hanging around good work from the scrum half almost up to the 22 but somehow Ireland have come away with it Henderson that is a Risky pass across the three-quarter line of England. Sexton steps back inside of Toje to make the tackle of Mahani. It really is all going off here. Million miles an hour stuff. Aki, Ringrose, Van der Fleer, little bit of space. Dan Sheehan, the hooker, out on the wing. Sheehan, the Leinster man, takes over from Kelleher, who's out injured. Both hookers, first-choice hookers for England and Ireland. At the start of this championship, not available. Cowan Dickey and Kelleher. Here's Van der Fleer, and here's James Lowe. Lowe pins the ears back. Will he get there? Yes, he will. Max Mellis couldn't make up the ground. There was space out there, and Ireland found it. Absolutely amazing. I'm just looking at the referee. Whether he wants to go to the TMO, and I think he's absolutely fine with it. What a start to a game. The TMO, there is an instant special, he will come in. Try is good. Try is good, good since yeah, Laws has gone across, he's seen something. I thought the referee had seen something, but no, they're not going to go to the TMO. No, it's good, thank you. No, that's fine. And what a start from Ireland. Ireland will not feel sorry for England. What I owe to this is a professional game, even though they're down to 14. That boy doesn't miss him from there. Again, they've worked that ball brilliantly. The ball normally would have gone out to the right. Gibson Park, fantastic pair of uh, brain on him, and just comes back to the left, passes the ball out, a couple of quick hands, he's in in the corner. What a start. What a start indeed. James Lowe, two tries against Italy, one now against England in Twickenham. And Sexton has the opportunity to give Ireland a 10-point lead inside seven minutes. Even the great dreamers didn't <laughs> see that one coming. Well, Sean O'Brien, the famous Lions Irish flanker, now with London Irish, predicted a nine-point victory. There's plenty of time in this game. But he predicted the way that Ireland were playing and England was stuttering, it would be nine points. That's what faces Jonathan Sexton. Will it come around? No, it won't. Eight points, though, after seven minutes. And what a finish. Sheehan, van der Flair, drew the man, and you could see Malin's trying to make up the ground, but low, just too quick. He could have gone inside of Gibson Park, he didn't. He went to his speedster, he went to the wing of van der Flair. Again, the, the, the numbers were on the left, everything was stacked on the right. That's why I said Gibson Park made that decision to come left. The result is that. We're underway once more, and Ireland have possession, and they've really owned the ball in the opening eight minutes of this game. England living off scraps. Gibson Park will go to the air. And then England really just need to get a hold of the ball here and get through some phases and 
Craig Stewart, the lesser fullback, does really well. He's been really impressive in the air throughout this competition so far. Ireland have gone after this one again. I think they've turned it. Have they turned it over? Who's got it? <laughs> it's an arm wrestle. Tackle, <laughs> tackle, release, tackle. Ireland get to ground. And the ball is there for the men in green again. Tyke Furlong tries to flip it up, but it still finds its way to Irish hands. But then low when Ringrose make a bit of a mess of it. And now England try from unstructured position to play. And the referee's decision was advantage gone. No, it wasn't. Back will come, but it's helter skelter. Stuff. It is, and actually, it's very difficult for England now down to 14 because that will tell in the end. But again, I think they need a little bit of control. They don't need to play what Ireland are trying to do. Ireland are trying to frighten England off the park at the moment with the playing this ball out the back, forwards and backs, um, interlinking. You know, just a couple of plays before when England got a penalty, Harry Randall tapped and go. That's fine. That's OK if he's in a Bristol shirt. But in this occasion, I don't think that was the right option personally. Just calm things down. You've just gone down to 14 guys, put it into the corner. Let these guys get that thing that England used to be proud of, a really big pack of forward, a good arm keep, wrestle, frighten the dimming living daylights out of you. Voice of Davy Morris, uh, Twickenham. Former England scrum half, of course, into the second row goes Courtney Laws. Uh, Jack Knoll comes off his wing onto the flank. That's he with a blue scrum cap. So England have a full eight, albeit with a back playing on the flank. Well, there ain't a problem with Courtney Laws going in the second row, obviously. I'm just Keep interested to see what um, his partner in crime, Mario Toja's work rate is, is, because, you know, he's one of England's big ball carries, big turnovers, big everything on the pitch, and he's had that flu issue or whatever it was. He didn't have a captain's run, so England will need him now to be above his best. So then, Ireland with the scrum that has a 100% record on their own ball in this championship so far, England 92% on their own ball. And without fuels, it's an imbalanced England scrum, which goes down and Ireland get the penalty. And this opening 10 minutes has gone all green. And that's a bad sign. <laughs> He's a quiet man, apparently. Mr. Furlong, Ellis Genge isn't. But it's in if you go down on your knee or your elbow, I can't see because I've been on the wrong side, obviously. The referee was in no doubt whatsoever that that was an Irish pen. Sexton into the corner, well, not as far as you would like, but again, make sure Ireland have come to play. They have come to tear England apart. Let's see if we can see it here. Genge Watch on the other side. Yeah. It's hard to tell from that angle, Stop. really. That was Genge, Stay. though very clearly penalised no, 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 no. by the Your referee. Mark is here. Don't move. England? Which was in the right position because it was his. <laughs> England. It was right in front of him. So. England. Okay. Six step. England. Six step. So then Dan Sheehan, just 23 years of age, with the responsibility of throwing to the Irish line and taken by Caelan Doris, and then right, James Lowe and Sexton appears think. again out wide, and it's taken on by Hugo Keenan and Keenan into the 22. No, with the desperate tackle, but gets there. Ringrose, the first receiver. Now Dan Sheehan. Ireland really mixing it up, backs and forwards, all sorts of options there. Off the breakdown, Gibson Park, short side, Gary Ringrose, tackles are made, England defending once more, burn, it'll pop off to Sheehan and Ireland are absolutely rampant now, six metres short of the English line, Gibson Park holds on, and England through Jamie George just about get to him, still there for Ireland. They're playing sevens rugby now, Bundiaki, three metres short, Ring Rose caught in possession, another penalty being offered to Ireland, Keenan, high tackle, scream the crowd, the referee will look at that later, Conway will step, Doris out wide, Ireland in again. The TMO will decide. He's got to look at it, but they're playing an advantage. I think it was... Furlong on somebody may have been slain in the midfield. They were playing advantage. They're playing two advantages. Ireland are very I just cute. Want to check two things. We're listening. Close on the rack, close to the ingo line. I just want to check if there is a knock on by Green. Okay. 
And then I, do, I want to check how he lost the ball, how the English player lost the ball on the interception. Yeah. Okay. Well, there is only going to be one winner in this one. Harry Randall, one of the smallest. Here in Dallas, right. Doris, one of the biggest. But we're looking at two things, so bear with us. Give me space, boys. So that's the grounding, and that's all fine. Back will go for a potential well, for me, knock on. It's a knock on for England here, so there is advantage, and I want to check. Now, can we have well, a the crowd will boo, but again, I like the way Ireland are playing because they're going to go. They go really beautiful on that far side. Okay, it's they now. cut back once and then they Captain go and hit again. It's almost Captain. like a, a reverse of, of the first try. Here Whereas England think they're going to come back into the midfield. They go. Was that a knock forwards? The referee will decide. There. Okay, wait for the camera, please. Uh, Matthew, wait for the camera. Wait for the camera. No. All right, so from what I saw on the big screen, a player in Van Iraq touched the arm of the scrum half, okay, which is legal, and the scrum half lost, lost the position of the ball in front of him, so it will be a knock on by the scrum half. Are you happy with that? I agree with you, yes. Okay. No try? No try for the knock forwards. It'll be a scrum to England. I think Jonathan Sexton is going to ask. Was it under advantage to Ireland at the time? I think he's probably going over to the referee now, whether we can hear in. Sorry? What was the penalty for the last one? Is it clear moving for one and collapse? Clear. Yeah, yeah, for one. Okay. Not only you, all the front row. Okay. Okay. But whatever happens, it's the try has been rubbed off. I don't think Ireland will stop playing the way they're trying to play. They're, they're trying to stretch England in the midfield. They're hitting back on the blind side. And the backs and forward, you wouldn't know what numbers the on their shirts really, they're so comfortable with the ball in hand, this is the way Farrell wants, this is where Mike Cat wants them to play, play with a smile on your face. The point almost made by the officiating party referring to the scrum half, who was in fact Gary Ringrose. Yes, yes he was, but a big scrum for England. Huge scrum, massive after what happened last time. Harry Randall feeds, and that is better for England, much, much better, but Ireland get a little bit of a squeeze on, the decision of the referee is that that is one in the ledger for the front row of England, Sinclair George and Genge get the penalty. Well, they've got to keep that on and that intensity and that desire and that whatever it's in their bellies now for the full game. Very good scrub, very good response in a sense. Going around Ireland, just nudging it around. Here is your mark. <laughs> I think that says everything, but again, it's a hell of a way to go. Jimmy, stay in the middle. So all the little wins add up at the end of the day. They all know it. Here's Jamie George. 65th international cap. Every little bit of that experience important now to England. And again, <laughs> another little win in the ledger. Matthew Ireland Ray closing Ireland. the gap. Yeah, as the ref just thinking, oh, <laughs> I'll give England a few penalties. I'm getting booed by the crowd here. I don't like it. Ball's going up. Gary Owen time. That's too far. Not a good kick from Martin Smith and Hugo Keenan. We'll double those up all day. Narrow side again, Ian Henderson. Hit by Maro Itoje. And drives the legs into England's half. Ireland go once more. That one doesn't go to hand. Picked up by Keenan. Gibson Park. Bundiaki. Ireland looking for the space once more. James Lowe on the outside. Tackle is... Made by Nalens. England go after it, but don't win it, but get the penalty. And that's a better three or four minutes yeah, yeah, for yeah. They're just getting themselves back into the game. Like I said, they're just staying off and not flying up into Ireland's play now at the moment. They're just reading what Ireland are trying to do, which we can all see what Ireland's trying to do. The precision there, Lowe does well. I think it was it Malins over the top. No, Merchant. Merchant, I apologise. Malins made the tackle. Yeah. Joe Marchant's Marchant. over, over the top there and does very well. You're allowed to do it next to the ball, then gets taken off illegally. So that's what the penalty was given for. Time is off, yeah. But England getting a few decisions from the referee. That will please the coaching staff. It will well, please the players, obviously. But again, territory-wise, and that isn't a good sign because he's just back from injury. Okay. Yeah, Tom Curry. It's the okay, right leg, whether that's knee or ankle, I'm not sure. But the word substitution, you heard it. Well... 
he's off, mate, that's for sure. But it's again, hard, you can see the way Ireland want to go hit blind Henderson when they come back in the open. That isn't a good sign for uh, uh, for Curry. John Brandt will have to come on on where and who now goes up before Samson is a number eight, but he's as quick as an open side. Yes, now it's John Brandt that comes in, eighth international camp. Started against Wales, scored a try, and then he comes into what is a all changed English pack. Really sorry to see Curry go. They'll, they'll miss his. <laughs> You're talking about desire, this guy's got it in spades. Eddie Jones looks on. But again, Don Brown, I think a bit of COVID, didn't he, early in the week? So he he's, he's had to be isolated. Yeah, but but again, you'll know that. Obviously, he looks Don fine and fit, and he's had his test, so he will know all the calls. Kick from the boot of Henry Slade to try and get every inch he can. Rare opportunity of the platform of a line out for England inside the Irish 10 meter line. England! They've gone for a five man line out. Simmons is out in the midfield. Oh, and we've gone after it. And who's going to win it? Not forward by an Irish hand. They got a body in the air to disrupt the English throw, but uh, England will get a second throw of the dice in terms of the set piece, but this time it'll be a scrum. They will go to a scrum, but they'll have to put again a back in, so that's just one less back out in the midfield, and we saw what happened in Cardiff last night. Walkie, wow, what a player he is. They throw him up, he wins the ball, all of a sudden Wales worked it out, and France's, France's ball supply dried up, and that's a big key area, so again, set piece crucial. But again, you can stop a side by just trying to outthink out him. Right. England are going to do the outthinking now. Bye. No. Guys. Boss, boss control. Boss control, we need a space. Okay? If you've joined us late, eight points in Ireland lead. The try from James Lowe after six minutes or so. But the big news is the dismissal of the English second row, Charlie Ulls, for a high tackle on Ireland's second row, James Ryan. Straight red card from the referee, Matthew Reynald. England down to 14. There for England, as again they try to get the shove on, but Ireland turn it again, and they're twisting it, and Genge after that stuttery start, has found his rhythm, and England have an opportunity to kick some points. Oh, they'll take the three here, and hopefully get the three. Jack Knoll says, it's easy this scrimmage, Mark. But again, they've got the bit between the teeth. This front row, they know this is the only way England are going to get back into this game or have a chance of winning if they can get into the brain or the mind of the referee. Just say, right, we've just won two penalties now of the last two scrums. Pierre de ton côté. Okay. Big kick, big pressure kick, well within his range, knocks this over in his sleep for fun. But again, this is what you'll be judged on as an international fly half, your percentage, your, your composure, your accuracy. Yeah, 78% kick success for Marcus Smith so far. 23-year-old settles himself, steps forward and gets him in on the scoreboard. He still has to prove himself at this level, but all the signs, the skill level unquestionable, the temperament is there. It's whether he can manage it. Days like this are the days you're going to find Absolutely. out. Absolutely. You know, Sexton has got the T-shirt and four caps today. This lad wants to be there for England. He is the future. I have no problem with it. He dictates things for Harlequins. Slightly bigger step up now against Highland, but again, this is how you mark yourself out as being that guy that can change a game or manage a game, and that's what England need at the moment. We need someone to manage it. Sam Simmons setting the up, and it's taken on by John Brandt. Randall will complete the exit, despite Ty Brandt throwing himself at the scrum half's right boot. That's fine, no problem at all, that. 
Harry Randall good, go for distance, not for the uh, three, four seconds, kick and chase, box kick. Again, what? now try and put some pressure on. We look at Sam yeah, Simmons, try and put some pressure on this on island lineup. I think they've, um, they've dropped it to five as well. Sheehan gets the call, and Ireland find their man down for Gibson Park, and Sexton and Bundiaki, and around the corner comes Sexton again, and it's find its way out to James Lowe, and Lowe pushes off Malins, gets to ground, and Gibson Park goes in search. Sexton once more, Caelan Doris, lovely hands to Tide Byrne, but Kyle Sinclair was there, and Ireland have made another mistake. Well, after six or seven pretty impressive minutes from Ireland at the beginning of this game, a couple of errors have crept in, and the momentum, as much through the commitment and ferocity of the English defence, has made errors, and there you see it. Yeah. And I was, if I was Gibson Park, or if I was Johnny Sexton, now I'd just go, right, lads, OK, made a few errors, just ramp it up. One out, I'm just going to give you one out, and you're going to crash it up. We're going to pop this up the field just to get some consistency back. And then when we've done that, we come is back there, in and play the injury? ball at the back. Yeah, That's what I would do, because game. England are reading okay, it at the moment. They're not flying right up in the faces. Player. They're waiting to see what Ireland do. The, the, the very most of the time, it's that ball okay, out the back. We're losing time. Okay. So and they don't want to lose that player. guy. Just injury? with his throw, it is his outstanding. He's probably the best, so one of the best accuracy-wise hookers in the world rugby, but also his scrummaging in England. Again, if they've got any chance in this game to come back and to, and to win, you need that front row going full tilt in the tight. That's scrummaging time. Well, he's seen it all, has Eddie Jones, the 62-year-old, uh, both club and international level. He'll have understood the task today, and uh, now he'll understand better than anyone just how high that bar has been raised. He's under pressure. He is under massive pressure. You lose today, you lose in Paris. France got out of jail yesterday, but the normal France would have just hightailed it to Aberdeer and Murtha, wouldn't they? Back in the day when they all were under pressure here, they, they dogged it out. It was an ugly win, but they did it. They'll be ready for England. <laughs> to, win, to win a Grand Slam against England in Paris, mm, doesn't get any better for a Frenchman. And now they have the free England. Bread so, foot, you put back your bread foot, they are now early engaged. That's freeze, that scrum and line out time, and Keep a couple of penalties as well. That was the break foot. This is the new rule in to, again to, to help hookers. Um, but obviously the break foot wasn't put out by the Irish hooker Sheenan, and hence that's three infringements. Now there's two penalties the last two scrum, and that was a free kick. Green on the line. It's so a safety right. feature. Not at all, mate. <laughs> right, I'll just say it's it's come in to to help hook as I was talking about about England, no. hooker in our, our club, our junior club. And he said really it doesn't do a great deal, but again, I'm not I'm not getting there. It's built it's brought in for a safety purpose, so there you go. Maro Tojek is a phenomenal athlete. What a great sight in full flight, Jamie George at the back of the wall. And then England pack have settled down to business. There's a lot of muscle in there, and they're going about using every bit of it. Randall at the back of the mall that hasn't exactly marched forward, but muscled its way forward. And now the scrum half to Slayton now. Marcus Smith and no out wide. Andrew Conway is bounced. Uh, Ringrose puts the English winger down. Randall once again. Marcus Smith quite deep. England playing it all the way back behind that game line. March it though. Accelerates into space in front of him and gets the pass away. And on England go through Simmons. It's a really good play to get them into the Irish 22. Crowd on their feet. England come roaring back into this one. Advantage being played. Randall. The kick is pointed at, but Keenan is there to stop Genge getting. The whole of the ball again will go back for the penalty, but that was oh so much better from England, and don't they love oh, their own headquarters? They can play it. Sam Simmons applauding there, but he was out on the wing. What a wide and wonderful wing. That's using his space, using his speed. England working out well. Ball out the back. March and chases up there. Two options. Give it to the number eight stroke. Open side now. Bounces low off. Keeps the momentum going. This is what the Twicken and Frayfell want. They want England rolling their sleeves up, they want the forwards doing exactly that. Get out of the way, sit down. Keep the momentum going. 
for once Ireland is scrambling to get back. Harry could have probably Harry Randall could have probably just kept that ball in hand. They were playing an advantage. And I wouldn't be surprised England to go into the corner now. And the pat's on the head for Sam Simmons. And the first rendition of the challenge. It won't be the last <laughs> I just wish it was a second verse. Here we go. Penalties conceded. I'm just looking now. My fruit machine two to England, five to Ireland already. Okay. This going to go in the corner. Slade just nudges in with his toe. And here we go. <laughs> Jamie George and England. First real opportunity to attack Ireland's try line. They go to Itoje, they go to the mall, and George has it. Ireland, good body positions. Kean Healy, Ian Henderson, lock it out. Use it. And now they're told to get on with it, and Kean Healy comes around the corner, and Ireland have it to Tyke Furlong and James Lowe. And downfield it goes. Marcus Smith goes scampering back. Gibson Park and Van der Flair come up. Jack Noel is there. Big open country over there. But Hugo Keenan has covered the ground really well. And now sees some of the big men in front of him and chooses to attack in Sexton over the top. It's end to end at Twickenham. Ringrose gets his hands on it. And Ireland are in touch over on the far side. Wow. <laughs> A double wow yet. What a game. What a game. Jamie George is complaining. Kieran Healy came round. He's knocked it out. Jamie George is complaining that that's a, an illegal knockout. I don't know whether the referee wants to have a look at it, but again, it just goes. He is going to the TMO. It's a beautiful offload from Kieran. Who is the captain? Johnny, but I'm. Just one minute. Okay. So, time is off for the injury. Okay. I don't want any more. You player, okay. tell me what I have okay. to do. Okay? Yeah. On the last situation, the player bring back the ball backwards. He read the ball in the hand of your player, which is which is legal for me. Okay? Well, Boys, let's make one point. Yeah. If you don't mind. Yeah. 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 Just one thing we want. That's that's what I saw in life. What is it? Just one point is. We want to get access. We don't have any access to the, the scene with the jumpers. Yeah, they're, they're closing off the scene for us. From, from my view, okay. it's not, there is an access okay. to the ball carrier between the two lifters. Okay. Well, it's, not, two. it's not a clear double bank. Okay. It's, there is an access. Okay. The reason why I let them play, okay. if it's clear, I will penalize Thanks, it. Thanks, sir. Appreciate that. There is so much going on there. I mean, Matthew Reynolds okay. has two captains, a couple of pack leaders, Two assistants and a television match official. And Peter Romani. <laughs> Where's the access? He's going to be a bouncer when he retires. There's no access to the ball, make an access. I love it. This is this is fantastic. End to end. And every time to Greg. It is an absolutely thrilling game. No. Everyone's helping the ref. You've got loose end props. <laughs> I feel Matthew Reynal might want to get a hold of this in terms of the number of voices that are giving him play on. advice. There was contact in the air there, I and, think, and, and the referee, referee said play on because it wasn't, it wasn't. Otherwise, we're just going to go from pen to pen, and we're, we're not going to enjoy this game as much as well we are because it's superb. Randall with the exit, and Ireland will get the throw to the line out. Just a... outside the English 22. Let's just go back in the yeah. context of the Here game. That mall down on Ireland's five meter line. Psychologically, that is a huge moment for both teams. Absolutely. England down to, to 14 guys in the first no, minute. So it, they go over there. They could actually go ahead. And that would be amazing with the charity possession they've had. Uh, and, and again, but these are the small margins that international rugby. You know, you win or lose a game. You can see a Toje now coming through being an absolute noise. Was he legal? I don't know. The referee allows him to do that. There you go. Referee says he was legal. And Jonathan Sexton 
throws his arms in the air at the assistant over on that far side to his Pierre Brousset to yeah, say, you've got to be kidding me. From my surgery, it's fine. <laughs> Sexton's just looking at the referee, just without saying anything, says it all. But again, it tells you that is he see, legally he's not allowed to do that because he swung up the side straight away. It's good, it's okay. And, but that's the referee. It is a fine line, that's all I will say, Ryle. England need him. England need him. Full ball, full 80 minutes. Keep your breath good. Another big scrum. And again, England seem to have the advantage, and that advantage is confirmed by the referee. Tyke Furlong is having a look at Matthew Reynald to say, you're kidding me. And as Genge taps him on the shoulder and suggests he retreats. The scenario with that is that everyone looks at that and think England obviously have then been given the penalty, the referee's made his decision. But basically you can charge around on the left hand side, where Noel is now with the blue cap. They actually put all the weight there, so it runs round to sort of anti-clockwise like that. This is what they're... This is what the front row of Ireland are appealing against. Basically, you've got to push straight. No one does, obviously, but it's up to the ref. But that's four pens, I think. It was three, de three definitely three pens in the scrum and a free kick from the scrum. Kyle Sinclair, 51st international cap for him. Jack No playing somewhere between wing and wing forwards. Back up. But England doing well, they want to take the clock down at every opportunity to play fast when it's on, but actually they'll know we're down to 14 guys. Just don't, you know, don't, don't fizz the ball around, just get everything, communication, right, let's get this ball, get it in, get it out. Ian Henderson trying to do a Maro Itoje, but not doing it either cleverly or legally, and it's another penalty for England, it's penalty number seven. Yeah. And if you go to the coach's manual and they say, all of them to a man, 10 a game is as many as we should be giving away. Well, Ireland have already given away seven and we haven't hit the half hour mark. And truthfully, that was as bad as clear as it needed to be for Matthew Reynal to award England the penalty. And everyone appealing to the referee. Like that. He's got a hard talk. job at Thank the best of much. times now. Kean Healy's coming up having a word. Ireland, from an Irish point of view, just needs to keep cool. Nudge this over. Farrell looks on, but nudge this over. It's just a two-point game, and you wouldn't think, would you? That red mark on the top of England in the top left. For those that have just tuned in, which I hope Come you on. haven't tuned in, you tuned in from the right from the beginning. That was the red card for Yule's first minute of the game. So then. A chance to get England within two, and he's pushed that one right and wide. Not what anyone here expected from Marcus Smith, and well, you don't need to be a lip reader to figure out what he thinks of that. No, he's got to get bounced back, doesn't matter. All the good ones missing. Well, this will be going downtown, I'm sure. Ooh, interesting. Reclaimed by Andrew Conway. Caelan Doris flicks it on, Bundiaki, pass goes to Gary Ringrose, and Ringrose has a little look up and forces the kick through, but the referee has seen another penalty. in front of the kicker. Ireland in front of the kicker, Jonathan Sexton the one who's penalised, and Ireland, well, truthfully, after a really impressive opening ten minutes, and taking that momentum of the sending off of yours, they started well anyway. But this is uncharacteristic, and truthfully, you feel like they're forcing it. Uh, they are a little bit, right? <laughs> and they've got all the experience. You've got Marnie out there, you've got Sexton out there, you've got enough experience to say, hold on a second, eight penalties now to two. And we're not getting any... We, we've got the foothold in the earlier part of this game. We're not getting it, we're just coughing ball up. Sladel, I'm sure, put this into the corner. And things aren't going well in the scrub, rightly or wrongly, it doesn't matter. The ref's making decisions. So you've just got to go, uh, so I don't think, or get, get you know, Sexton to have a word, a, a word with him. He's having a go at goals. Here we go. 
Oh, you can have a, a, and actually that's taken down another minute, so it's, it works in both ways. Okay, so. So, so, so you, you tell you what you tell me, Mark? How many meters? Captain, the, the penalty is five meters in front. You want to take it? Yes, please. Yeah. Slowly, slowly. Slowly. No, it's Sorry. not, in, the it's not in front. It's to the goal line. Okay. Now, and, and you know what that does? It makes a, it makes a change in the thought process of who takes the kick because it's now Sorry. in comfortable range for Martin Smith. Henry Slade had been lining up the kick, but the Exeter outside centre decided five metres shorter, that's Marcus's territory, and we'll give it to him. I thought he said touch, touch line as in coming towards, obviously, touch line down the bottom. Goal line is five metres in front, yeah, but he's missed one, just he's got one, missed one. England need this now. So, having fluffed his lines the last time around, an opportunity for Marcus Smith to bounce back immediately and get England to within two. And it's a mark of the young man that he does so, and does so with confidence and comfort. And England are within two. And considering the challenge that has faced them since the opening minute of this game, Two minutes down after 33 minutes. Two points down, I should say, after 33 minutes. Well, he won't be unhappy at all, Eddie Jones. As much about the attitude of England as the performance. Well, there's a lot of heart there. You can see that sometimes. Well, there's no option, is there? It's just to play out of your skin. You've got to really put in your 100% best game of all time. Toje goes to round. Henderson, the one to make the tackle. Uh, stay back, stay back. Back the line. Peter, back the line. Thank you. Get himself back in this game now. No, back the line. Rondo took a little bit to sort his feet out, but gets the kick away. Really well taken in traffic by Hugo Keenan. Gibson Park, Tyke Furlong. And he goes root wall. Gets a knee to ground, means it's a tackle, it's got to be released, and it's there for Sheen and Sexton. Then Andrew Conway and Itoje, like a goalkeeper, just reaches out and puts a big paw in the way, knocks it off its trajectory, and into touch, and it will get the throw to the line out. Highland. Again, Highland fancy in that blind side. Well, again, was from an Highland player, nice to see tackle, just take it up, just give me that ball, one out, and I'm just going to ramp it up. Down Sheehan, down for Gibson Park. Bundiaki with the ring rose on his shoulder. Slade is the one who meets him. Sexton back inside to Kalen Doris. Courtney Laws quickly back to his feet, having made the tackle. Sexton, there's all sorts of movement out there for Ireland, but England reading it all and setting Ireland back a couple of metres. Van der Fleer runs into Simmons. Okay, Tackle. It's a penalty for a high tackle uh, against England. Tyke Byrne On the under meters, advantage. Right? Free reign. Conway out the back door to Dan Sheen. Good feet from the hooker to get away from the tackle of Malins. And Lowe is on his shoulder. Maro Itoje goes in search of the ball. Stop. No, no advantage will accrue. Back will Come go back for the high tackle. Itoje is a freak of nature. How on earth he actually got his body down and nicked that ball. I know it doesn't count because we're going back for an advantage. Unbelievable. Forward. But he did give the high tackle away. That's the propensity that he's got, unfortunately, sometimes. Again, he's ducking down. It is not dangerous. Oh. No. It could have been. It could have been stupid, clumsy, and he could have gone off. But again, the referees just said, right, enough of that silliness. But that's what he does. He does give pens away because he's like that. He's 100 percent all the time. You happy with that decision there? Jesus. Absolutely, you, no, I think, I, I, in some ways, I think that might even be harsh against Itoje. Yeah. 424 metres made. 
great <laughs> statistic if you're an Irish that's attack it, coach. That's but, what it's yeah. but only eight points on the board. That, but it ain't matter now, as long as the darts are right, the catcher gets it right, and you execute the next phase. And now he's given a few pence to Ireland. Here you go. Free kick to Ireland for England closing the gap in the line out on that occasion. Gibson Park, Kean Healy. Sheehan. George slips off the first tackle. Allows Ireland to get Advantage. going forward. Kean Healy though. Can't control it. Ireland get the penalty. Gibson Park allowed to take it quickly. Ireland are almost there. Hugo Keenan. Ireland in for their second try. Quick penalty taken. Referee happy to let it go. And Ireland get another one. And why not let it go? Perfectly legal. You see the referees bringing it back. Oh, wasn't quite on the spot by six inches. Especially their ball. And that was, uh, they were offside, basically, Kean Healy smashing that ball in. Again, it goes forward, but they were offside, deemed offside. Gibson Park, as ever, is on there. And Keenan. Beautiful finish. Again, bounced a few tackles. And again, all that yardage. Again, and England come back into the game. What you need is that precision in the 22. Come away, they know all about it. You get down there, you execute, you kill move. And they've done that. Try as good is the voice of Marius Juncker from the television match officials booth. South African confirming uh, that Ireland have their second try. Sexton then. Missed the first conversion of the James Low try. In and out to Jack Noll to try and charge it down. Perfectly legal. Doesn't put Sexton off. Up go the flags. Okay. Ireland lead it by 15 points to six. What a time to score. Again, it's a great line from Keenan. There you go. He asked the referee. England thinking that England thinking that Ireland will just take the three because they've been so behind for the last ten minutes. None of it. No, oh, almost away. Still there for England. Genge runs into Sexton and Ringrose. England looking to bounce back, get some points on the board to add to the six they already have before the half-time break. Freddie Stewart into the Irish 22, all coming from the restart from the gather of Jack Noel. Will Stewart into the game. More on him later. Right now it's about Marcus Smith, it's about Dombrat, it's about England going in search of more points in the final minute of this first half. Where is it? Randall has it. Itoje, Ty Byrne and Henderson goes after the ball, but he's off his feet, he has to leave it alone. Doesn't leave it alone. It's another penalty for England. It's a cheap one given away by Henderson. He didn't need to do it. And England will gratefully receive those. They will. They're exerting a hell of a lot of pressure out there. I think they will go for three. We've seen as the clock is nearly at 40. Smith won't miss this one. But again. Oh, my Mac Hansen moment, wasn't it? Jack Noel up there against France. You remember that when France had just scored a try and Ireland came straight back at them. Mac Hansen not even on the bench today. Look at that, nearly. Noel, Noel does get it the second grasp. Runs into Bundiaki. Okay, thank you. This can't be any fun. <laughs> Straight up to the kick. No, not full tilt. That Henderson doesn't need to do that again. Video analysis on Monday or whatever, but that's just stupid. I mean, that. It's actually buying. In a sense, you could have had a yellow card because it's a professional foul with the amount of phases that England would, you know, England put it together. In a sense, he's stopping him getting five, maybe seven points, give him three. If he was five metres out, he would have done in yellow. Final act of a first half that's had a little bit of everything. Marcus Smith adds another three. 
and England have nine. They only have 14 players on the pitch, but they have acquitted themselves really well. Ireland still lead it though, and lead it by 15 points to nine. Sky Sport has the ICC Women's Cricket World Cup. A moment of brilliance. Live in Aotearoa. Let's go. White Ferns, Australia. Today live on Sky Sport 3. Coverage proudly brought to you by ANZ. There's not much food left as it is. You saying you're more important than everyone else here? Crisis below. That thing is called a giant ground slot. Crisis above. There is someone I know. There's no pilot I trust more. You bring my family home. You got my word. Danger all around. What do you see, Captain? Try to crack your cup. Tonight, all new La Brea Prime. The IndyCar series is heating up as the fastest drivers in the world look to push the limit in No Limit, Texas. Scott McLaughlin is now an IndyCar race winner. Oh, boy, thank you so much. Scott Dixon wins back-to-back -back years and wins at Texas. Yes, it is. Oh, boy, oh, Ward. Pano Award is an IndyCar winner. Who will take the first oval victory this season? The IndyCar series, Texas, live on Sky Sport. Park in Auckland has become a fortress for the All Blacks and beaten here in 27 years and beaten here against Australia in 35 years. Off it goes for Moonga. Now McKenzie ducks in behind Ioani but well contained on the 10 metre line and the ball again for Aaron Smith. Now Moonga for Havili. Leonard Brown could open up here, tipped on but Salvi has knocked it on this time. So both teams guilty of early mistakes in the first 10 minutes of the game. And this time the All Blacks win this scrum penalty. James Slipper can't believe it. Moana looking for first points in the game. And over it goes. And the All Blacks on the board. Away it goes to Whitelock. And uh, the Wallabies need him. Holding in front now, Black Now the clearance now. from Moonga. Again, good distance. Banks almost was 22. Hit him on the head, I think. And they're going to play on. No, they're not. Well, that could be a penalty, couldn't it? Oh, on, guys. Trying to put a bit of pressure on. Now releases Smith. They're playing under advantage. McKenzie got away from one. Taken down, playing under this penalty advantage, Sabia. Driven down in the tackle, but this advantage will go on for some time, no doubt, as Whitelock throws it behind McKenzie. It's all very untidy. Nothing coming there, guys. And they'll have to go back for the penalty. No problem at all for Moonga. Now Ritalik, Moonga. Haveli, beautiful pass to McKenzie. Ducks under a high one and stands on his feet, Damian McKenzie. Wallabies have turned this over. Michael Hooper, brilliant. Now off it goes to Jordan Pattaya out on the right wing side. So both sides making errors as McDermott away for Swain. McDermott in it for his quick clearance, but not getting much chance here. And in fact, struck it well, struck it beautifully, and kicks his third penalty goal, Richie Moonga, right out in front of the goalpost, 20 metres away, as McDermott goes for a little burst and a head-high yeah. tackle, as he ducked low, but I think Ritalik might have gone yeah, just high by four. around the neck. 
Doesn't take much time over it and bangs it through. So the Wallabies are finally on the board. Boy, that's not straight. That's gone down the All Black side, but Paisami and here's Callaway, and the Wallabies are in. Andrew Callaway. Oh, what a try! What a try from the Wallabies. He finds a nice gap. Look who's on the inside. Callaway supporting as every good winger should, and he's got enough speed to get himself over. Outstanding try for the Wallabies. So Taylor throws quickly. Oh. Whitelock himself wins it. Taylor. Has the ball at the back. Yes. The All Blacks are making progress, and very good progress too. Over the five-metre line they go. Taylor hangs on, but he loses his footing. Tries to go again. Uh, Can't quite get there, so it's now Smith and it's a tackle. ready to release. Whitelock has moved to his left. Advantage. And now the offside. Wallabies are offside. Yuani stands over the ball. There it is this time for Savia. Really close. And a try is scored. By Sevi Reese. Oh, great try. Persistence from the All Blacks. Now Smith slings it off to Whitelock. Nowhere to go, though. Hooper is up on him like a shot. So Smith... Looking for some more runners, and he finds Moanga, who puts Leonard Brown into a gap. Now there's a chance for Ioani. Slings a wild pass, beautifully pulled in. Now Ritalik. Ritalik to Havili. Away it goes for Savia. Now Reese. Oh, what a try that is. Seven Reese. And the All Black score. Brilliant. They're coming to you from your referral. On field decision, obviously, Troy. I would agree with that. Yeah. Yeah, it's more the marginals for the other. Yeah, he's right there, Paul Williams, isn't he? I mean, no one's got a better view than him. Yeah, Glenn's uh, outside. The Wallaby said he got back to a scrum mate? already. We've right. got that fought out of the hand. Yeah, that's correct. Cool. Yeah, okay. Thanks, mate. So, no one of the great tries becomes a non try. Patient build up here. Now they get it away. A lot of seal. Spinning in the tackle was James Slipper. Ball available though. Now Paisami intercept Moanga. They won't pull him back, I don't reckon. Richie Moanga under the bar he goes. Oh, they missed out on one before where he started. The Wallabies, they'll be disappointed with that because they needed a bit more patience. Paisami, he decided to go over the top. Yeah, Richie Moonga, he was defending out wide. They made some massive inroads. Slings it across to Taylor. Advantage. Playing an advantage here. The Wallabies offside. Smith again. White lock in midfield. Have the advantage, nine. Smith now right up the middle go the All Blacks. Now Smith looking to deliver. Goes with a beautiful pass for David Havili. And he scores. Oh, the pass from Aaron Smith. Dalton Papali'i. Not tackled. Good run well, by was. the number seven. Advantage. As the All Blacks try and clean out. Wallabies didn't clear out, though, and the All Blacks very close there. Now they're going to have another go. Smith wants it, reckons blindsides the answer, and it is the answer for Damian McKenzie. Quality pass once again from Aaron Smith. Release straight away. Now Matt Phillip very close to the line. Defining moments in this game here. Right. Quick pass. Right out in front. Still playing under this penalty advantage. Now the short pass. Valentini, I think it is, having a go. Ball is still there on the Wallaby side. Now they go wide. Lawless Seo, they've got a score, and they do, through Tom Banks. He's had a massive impact on here for the Wallabies. He's Thank brought you. energy as well. And a nicely executed try in the end. His 100th game has come to an end. It will be a winning game. He's going to get one of your silver caps, Mills. Brad Weber on in 21. Outstanding performance.
is passing close to the line. Here's Matt Tamua. Now Gordon. Away for Lolosio. Drops a little kick in. What a beauty it is too. And Banks is going to get a couple. Wow. Tom Banks. And this is what I'm talking about. Don't give up. Look at that. Lolo Seal. Oh, this is just add to his experience. He snipes out if he sees it. No one's in behind him. But look at that end to end kick. It just curves out the other side. Line out throw. Oh. One by Phillip. Oh. No, Wallaby's no. one last shot at this. Yep. Will Essie. Still got it. And off he goes. And over he goes. Wallaby score again. Through David Harvey initially. And then another couple of players coming in behind. Artie Sevilla, Sam Whitelock couldn't stop him. As Wallaceo tries to add two and does so right at the death. Makes the conversion, but the game is over. And the All Blacks have the win at Eden Park in the first of three Bledisloe Cup test matches, 33-25. Kids, it's dinner time. Mm. Dinner time, my favorite nighttime meal. Oh. 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 <laughs> Why does nobody come in through the front door? Dearest mother and father, we will not be attending this evening's ritual mastication. What? They're both growing up so fast. They wouldn't be caught dead with their parents. <gasps> Wait a minute. What? I've got it, Tish. It's hideous. It's monstrous. It's the old Adam's camper. Time for some family bonding. What? Huh? We are going on a road trip. This is cruel, even for you. Let's roll! This trip will bring the Adams closer than ever before. Let's make some memories. <gasps> Whoa! <laughs> it's just us and the wonderful sound of silence. Family 2, coming soon. Ah, here he is! The depths of the sea, back to the black Snoop Doggy Dog monkey and the butler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good to see you, my bewhiskered cousin. I still don't understand the word that guy says. Where's Kitty? He and it hit the catnip pretty hard last night. It's time to go. Last ball. Oh, this is incredible. Oh, oh, get get hey, boy, This is incredible. It's the power of Pacific. DHL Super Rugby Pacific. Today live on Sky Sports. So, Jonathan Sexton makes his way from the changing room area, leads Ireland back out, and you feel uh, the two coaches, although they are trailing, Eddie Jones will be the happier Danny Morris. He will, but again, he'll know it's an hour. Oh, it's, it's, it's <laughs> an understatement, a massive 40 minutes now for England. Uh, we're just here, Sinclair's not coming back, uh, but anyway. Ireland won't stop playing the way they will. The biggest concern for Andy Farrell is the penalty count. England only given four penalties away, Ireland given nine. That's what's kept England in the game. It's whether England and Andy Jones, yes, he will be delighted at the, at the endeavour, the heart and all that. Well, that should go with the territory. He's got playing with an England shirt on. Uh, we see Stewart taking over from Sinclair there. He had a bit of a knock in the, in the week, I believe, uh, Sinclair. So, to, to cut a long story short, it's England have just got to carry on with their 14 man attempt to climb uh, a very big Mount Everest. Yeah. Yeah. 
so then, Matthew Reynald gets us underway for the start of this second half at Twickenham. Round four of the Guinness Six Nations in England. Get a hold of the ball from the restart and punch a hole through Dombrandt. And if they can get the first point of this second half, well, psychologically, what an enormous impact that could have on this game. Marcus Smith is growing and warming to the task. Freddie Stewart takes it up. England trying to pick up where a lot of that first half was. Ian Henderson needs to be careful, giving away a couple of cheap penalties. England very much on the hunt for the early points. Who's going to win possession? It's won by Ireland. I think it was Ty Furlock who got down. The big man got down to win possession. Caelan Doris slips and runs into the tackle of Don Brandt and Ireland have secured the, the ball again. Back the line, please. Worth noting, in the 22 no, previous Six Nations games the between these sides, never has the side losing at half-time been able to turn it around. What England are looking to do is to do that for the first time and to do it with 14. Well, if they carry on doing that's a tremendous kick-off from England's point of view. They've retained that ball. Don You're Brandt does what he does for Harlequins and now doing for England. Well overdue as far as I'm concerned, he's needed to be given more uh, game time prior to this game, but anyway, that's just one mistake, you see, all that endeavour, all that good, what was it, two, five, six, seven phases, whatever, just go, because one precision pass didn't come quite to go to hand. Ball is there for Smith again, and to the air is the decision, it's a good kick, it's going to land just outside the 22, but Hugo Keenan, along with Freddie Stewart, it has to be said, the two have been pretty impressive under the high ball. And this man is pretty impressive in open play. James Lowe scored an absolute scorcher end-to-end -end for Leinster a couple of weeks ago. Looks to try and do so for Ireland as well. Here's Sexton as Ireland get their first opportunity to attack. Another try, a third try. And surely the mountain would just be too high for England in this second half. They'll know that Lowe is cut down. And it's Marchand who makes the tackle. Henderson. Back inside, big second row steps, Andrew Conway. And now Van der Fleer, Genj, completes the tackle for England. Sexton once more, ring rows. James Lowe has got his hands on the ball three or four times during this passage of play. But the ball is knocked forward and England have it and they scramble back and they've dealt with that threat from Ireland really well. Tyburn after the ball. Randall. Well, he had time and there was an English hand in there and Ireland not going to hang around Gibson Park for the second time. Ireland take the penalty and take it quickly. Sheehan sets it up. Gibson Park for Ian Henderson. They're pounding at the door. Noel makes the tackle on Van der Fleer, but he drives the legs. The red scrum cap held up inches short of the English line. Jonathan Sexton. Gary Ringrose, Ringrose steps back inside, 1-2. English players there to meet him, Randall and Maru Itoje, but it's another green wave. Got to go left. Gibson Park, Sexton, great tackle, Jamie George. Super effort from the hooker. Knocks Ireland's momentum. Van der Fleer, Maru Itoje makes the tackle. Gibson Park, Keenan, Ty Byrne. Burn has Henderson, but the ball doesn't go to hand in England. Scramble and fight and find a way Stop. of First. stopping Ireland. Second. And it is a mighty Second. relief around Twickenham. Unbelievable from England, defensively wise. You just think that when I said left then, all it had to go was through the hands. I think it was 5-2. to two. 5-2 to two overlap going left. Unfortunately, England's line speed was brilliant. Jamie George is up there. He snuffles that fire out. And again, they're just throwing everything at Ireland now. Tagburn tries to get the offload going. Unfortunately, Henderson can't quite get there. The diminutive figure of Harry Randall just bounces on the ball and just says, come on, have a break. But again, you've got to say Lowe is carving up England as Cuthbert did for Wales, what, a couple of, week, couple of weeks ago. You know, he's, he's getting more space because there's only 14 England defenders because he also has been sent off in the first minute. I know that, but he is a potent threat all over the place. I thought he was going to chip over the top at one point. Decided to do this, well, possibly the sensible thing. Keep hold of the ball, keep the pressure on England. No, boss. Every time. Guys, is it? No, boss. 
you are both free engaged, so we need a space. So we're keeping, we're not moving, so we're not moving. Don't move, okay? Keep the control. We need a space. So make it obvious for So then this will be interesting. Uh, Scrum a real weapon for England in that first half, but a change in that front row with Tur Stuart, Will Stewart in for Kyle Sinclair. Will that make a difference? Not in the referee's mind, he penalises Aaron. Straight penalty. Kian Healy with a shake of the head. Court and Laws in England will gratefully accept. That's a penalty. That's early engaged there. Jamie George, I think, bought that one brilliantly. He said we will do this slowly. Put the foot down, the hooker's got to put his foot for his right foot in Jamie George's case forward. He did that, and now it's gone by and into an early push. You're not allowed to. So, England, yeah, you can pat yourselves on the back. Jamie George can pat, him, pat himself on the back. Your mark. England. Here. Two meters, sir. Who would be a coach? Two meters, sir. Two meters. There you go. Says it all. Sheena, I think, had a brilliant game. Doesn't agree. Marrow told you, he's been everywhere. He's been the heartbeat for English in the opening 46 and a half minutes of this game. George at the back. And England's up the jumper into the mall. And away comes Jamie George. He thought about the pass inside. Instead, he had Dumbrat on his shoulder. And Marcus Smith calls for it in a little show, but... No go because Kalen Dorison, Ian Henderson are there. Chip over the top for Andrew Conway to deal with, and he did Stop. so well. Good kick, really good kick from Andrew Conway. Boy, did that bounce go in his favour. What about that? Little smile. Yeah. I'm not sure that he meant it. Well, of course, I say he did. <laughs> One of the six changes that uh, Andy Farrell made. I've got to so say. England have to play very tight. They played very tight to this no, no, this touchline, but Harry Randall, I don't get think up. he needs just to kick ball away like that. Yes, this was a fluke. You can say that. You were going for grass. That bounce of the rugby ball, we know no, it's uh, hard straight, to predict. He, and because of that, you give gap. possession away. A little bit of luck comes here, free kick, and off Gibson Park goes. He takes it quickly, Van der Fleer. Oh, oh. sit down, says Genge. Gibson Park, tied Furlong. Bundiaki, Ireland, trying to force it and force it into a forward pass and every mistake is now cheered around Twickenham the adrenaline is pumping through players and crowd alike they believe that they can escape from this it's turned into American football isn't it the yelling the, the, that is a massive hit from Genge on Flea, a big ball carrier. We keep a space. Nine ca tackles I'm hearing from Genge, and this was the forward pass, again, chopped in two. Sam Simmons. Let's go. Dowie, I remember guilty of forcing this, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, and that's where I think just watching Johnny Sexton came home, just calm it down, as England were whipping it, that's what they've got to do, they've got to whip it up, they've got to try and get everyone on the, on the same sort of... Um, playlist in a sense so we got to just Boy. try and get into everywhere whereas Johnny says hold on lads we're just blowing things now just take it back a little bit a bit like when they went out of 13 men against Italy all of a sudden you know they weren't as precise and we're looking to get the squeeze on and then Ireland buckle a little Keane Healy comes up and the referee says oh. we'll go again and this is where Come. Kian Healy is asking, we're, we're, we're straight, and then no, all of a sudden England the come round the side, so what are we supposed to do? No, 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 okay. I do not understand that, because no, no, no. Alan are not about scrimmage okay, inside overnight. They've come into the one more than the other one, OK? You sidestep a little bit, and you bind on his arm. So I want a long bind by you, yeah. and I want you to stay straight. Is that clear enough? OK? Both of you. So, let's go, boys. Two the best in the business. Well, they, they come in with the best stats in the liner and scrubs, Ireland. So you don't get bad overnight. So it's whether you know, again, it's it's no it's um, okay, so analyst, analysts lot. work. All right, if we do this, we do this. This referee may give that penalty because he's done that in the past. You know, all I know, he's given a lot of penalties to to uh, to England at the set piece. Come on, wait, 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 crutch. But even Five. just with 30 minutes to go, this is crucial. I think the time is his still favourite. Who scores next? You know, and all that. Ireland get ahead. England don't come back from there. England going to try. They do. And England get a penalty. 
and they're on their feet at Twickenham. He's put in some shift. <laughs> he's, <t> he's tackling <laughs> like a back row. He's scrummaging like a pro. That's what he gets paid the big money for. This is uh, soul destroying from Ireland because that is straight. Five scrum penalties now. And that is fine. That is going straight. England are going forward. Ireland can't handle it. But how long can they boy these boys in white keep that up? Well, there were some question marks coming into this game about the sense of team that England had under Eddie Jones. You would say after 50 minutes that the sense of team is significantly more positive than had been thought or reported because they've gone after this uh, like a group who really believe in themselves. Yeah, and I think when you go down to 14, sometimes in the face of adversity, you know, you do. You said, well, there's only one way to, to go from here, lads. And, you know, are you going to play for your coach? Are you going to play for your loved ones? Are you going to play well today on that 50 minutes? And you just said, they are. They're still behind. Plenty of time to come. But again, they're scrapping for everything. Randall down on the narrow side. Marcus Smith time. attacks the space. And Jack Noel, who's been on the side of scrums at the back of line outs. And on the wing right now, where he was selected. Genj, who's becoming the cult hero of... The effort from England so far, Slade and Simmons comes into some strong tackling from Ireland in midfield, led by Bundiaki and assisted by Jonathan Sexton. Smith to the air. So far, the fullbacks have managed all that's been asked of them, and Hugo Keenan continues that trend. But England get numbers there and get over the ball, and this place. It's gone nuts. We've got to keep it going for 29 minutes. But again, that's that's the only option for England down to 14. Ireland's defence is suffocating. They can't go left, they can't go right. They have to go the aerial route. They have to go to kick to compete. Keenan is like one of the best underneath the high ball. Takes it. But the, 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 the charge and the, the rush from England is so absorbing. Look at that. Stewart just waits. Martin is there, holding on to the ball. He gets his hands on the ball, hence the penalty. Everything has to be precise, and England are doing that. Please, please. Okay. Three points takes it to 12:15. That's a set play in your time. Looking down as Marcus Smith lines this one up to the replacement benches, and one has already been sprung in Will Stewart, Ben Youngs comes into the game now as well comes in for Harry Randall well this might suit England because Ben has experience obviously most experienced most kept England player of all times you know his box kicking and whatever you don't have to have quick passes now to survive this game or to get yourself ahead in this game you've just got to be pretty clued into what you need to do and that's good over it goes from Marcus Smith and he you feel is beginning to believe and he well he looks a little shook as Ireland reach to their bench and go for a herring that hooker and kill coin without a shot will take over from Keen Healy that shield who's gone for Rob Herring well they got plenty of experience on the bench these guys have seen it done it whatever Ireland oh, share in the province so again yeah, they're not going to be rattled but they just need to get their hands on the ball at the moment England is dictating things So then, then Young's 116 it. international caps. Hugo Keenan through traffic, can't get there. Jack Noel can. Andrew Conway's taken a bang, stays down. Young's will dig it out and go for Act 2. Sexton away, Sierra told you. All lined them up. From outside the 22. And absolutely stopped him. Furlong. Somehow, I don't need to get a grip of this game. They have the lead, the slenderest of leads. They have the additional player, 15 against 14. But England have all the momentum and all the belief it would see. 
for Eddie Stewart. And get the penalty, just what they needed. In there, over the ball, is Caelan Doris. And that's how you relieve the pressure, by one lad just biding his time. Again, all England players were passing and were actually pointing to Marcus Smith. Give the ball to Marcus Smith. Stewart decided to take it in, and again, he's just got isolated a split second. Ireland are the best at stopping ball getting out of Rex. Their Rex speed is one of the highest yeah. in the game. Sexton is back to shaking his head, but he'd be relieved with that. It just takes the time down a little bit. There was a push, what he's complaining about. When that ball went up in the air from the high up and under from the his first blood. box kick, blood. there was we a play. push from Noel. We play. I think to Conway's back, and then Conway went into someone. Was it Herring, the hooker, I think? Well, obviously, it's, it's, he made contact. Sexton's penalty dispatched just outside the English 22. Dave Hillcoin, 47th international, gives the call to Ulster's Rob Herring, winning his 25th international cap. And Ty Byrne climbs. And England have the penalty. Ireland crossing in that Cross. lineup. And second, England on the side because there is a double bag. And England have the penalty. And Ireland are looking at each other and they are utterly confused by what's going on out there. Well, England just seem to be the, the fitter, the brighter, the more energetic side at the moment. Just remember, they were down to 14 guys after one minute. Yule's off. Byrne goes in there and it's, it's, it's Henderson again. It's this guy in front of the jumper. You're not allowed to do it. Again, as I said many times in his Six Nations game, nine times a day, ten times a day, you get away with it. That referee is not going to allow that because it's probably Mario Tozzi or Jamie Judson. Watch out for that ref, watch out, they're being smart, England. Jamie George, as the penalty count, hits 13 for Ireland, Youngs and Smith into the air once more. Keenan will go high and gather just England after us and get the turnover to a knock forward. They might get more. Ball is protected, referee blows the whistle. You almost can't hear the whistle, oh, such as the noise. Around. I have never heard Twickenham like this. I am being absolutely serious. I know everyone likes to, to talk it up. This place is erupting at the moment because you can see these guys in white. Just 14 of them, they're just clawing their way back into this game. That's two kicks now for Marcus Smith. It's the only way they're going to press this Irish defence is put this ball up. Kick to compete when they're doing that. Keenan's taking it twice now and straight no, away. The first, first they're on it. Knock on by your Simmons is just over the top. I'm quite exactly sure who gets there first, but Stewart's there again. Simmons is definitely there. Keenan does well just to hold on, but it doesn't matter. It's advantage England. England got to put it in the scrum. And we all know how England strengthened the scrum. Mario Toji's like Superman. Don't pull him back, okay? Right then, where to from here? That's the Irish 22. England have options both ways, albeit with depleted numbers. Jack Noll again into that. Well, I think they'll just go for a pen. Sorry, Rob, I think they'll just go for a push. It's in the, in the referee's mind now. Was it five scrum pens or whatever they've got? And a free kick, I'm sure. It is indeed five scrum penalties. Paul O'Connell, right <laughs> a picture. <laughs> what they do for having him out there now. Keep your head with all those illusions there and blaming it on you. Big scrum. Well, it could be the bluff. Simmons' his pace going up the blind side with Young's Marcus Smith right behind the scrum. Could be a bluff. Stop to speak and do your job, okay? Games are firm, having a right old ding dong. And in truth, Games has been the one that's got the upper hand in the referee's mind since the first minute. Uh, although Furlong did get the first penalty, if you have a memory that goes back that far. That's all of them. It's been all Games as far as that referee is concerned in the right and Furlong in the wrong.
huge moment in the context of this game as we approach the hour mark. And the referee awards England a penalty. And they'll come back. And they'll kick a goal in an attempt to draw the sides level. And Ireland are going to get a lecture. Listen in. There is too many infringement in scrum, okay? You're you prop, you will get call up the scrum. There is too many infringement. I penalize. I, I penalize many times on a row, so now you have a walk with yeah. the player. I need to play better scrum, okay? Yeah. You lose that on the opposite side. There you go, it's the loser's fault. All I know is Marcus Smith is going to line a kick it from the 22 right in front of the post, which will put England ahead by a point. No, they won't no, draw. No. My God, I'm getting, I'm getting too excited. Yeah, shut up, Morris. Steady. They'll draw at 15 all. Steady now. You're going to get four points four. for a penalty now. You do it quicker now. When you're down to 14 men, it's a new rule. <laughs> Calm down. Oh, this place, unbelievable. The clock ticks past the hour mark. Marcus Smith with the opportunity to land his fifth penalty of the evening. Five trees. 15 points for England. 15 points for Ireland. And after a minute, well, nobody saw this one. Nobody saw this one and no one is going to be leaving this place until the final minute. That is for sure. Where would you rather be? Ireland, England, ah, oh, my word. Peter O'Mahony has made way in, in his place comes Jack Conan, the British and Irish Lions test number eight. Who else but Maria Tozo picks that out of the sky? Young to the sky again, Hugo Keenan, it's rained down on him, particularly in this second half. He's caught it, but England have caught him, forced him into touch. No, well, you look around the English squad, I was just about to say there no has been outstanding, but yeah, all 14 that have been out there yeah. have been outstanding and led by that man, Maro Atoje. So they've had to be. Here Ireland have been good. Well, they're Ireland, <laughs> good in phases, but they've not been able to put anything together because everything England do, putting the ball in the air, three, four seconds, they chase. They chase as a pack. Of wild dogs. Use it! Stop to the air off. once more, this time through the boot of Slade. Forward comes Andrew Conway to gather the ball, but again, England come with numbers. Jonathan Sexton Ireland have barely seen the ball out wide in this second half, but. James Lowe and Ringrose get a hold of it. Ball is kicked straight down. The throw to Stewart. He's hit as he kicks. Nothing in that as much as the crowd might like there to be. Conway already came up with a fantastic 50-22. And he's come up with another one. Andrew Conway. Well, if the first one might have been a bit fortuitous, the second one most definitely is not. Well, Lowe's been the biggest strike threat throughout this game, and that's about the first time I think in the second half that he's got the ball in his hands, or probably the second time. Conway on this wing can't do a thing wrong with his, with his kicking into touch. And the game is, again, is just flipping and flapping like that. England not doing anything wrong. Everyone thought it was a penalty for Stewart just running the ball back. It wasn't. It's a perfectly good tackle from Lowe. Puts the ball down there to Conway. Conway kicks into the corner. Over to you, Ralph. Ireland don't control it, but just about hold on to possession. Van der Fleer is wrapped up by Courtney Laws. He needs to get himself out of there and does. Kill coin on the charge. Ireland. This is their first real opportunity in the second half to go after this English try line. Bundiaki. Gibson Park. 
Tyke Furlong, wall of white in front of him, led by Laws. It's OJ there as well. Ireland gets a ground. Ball should be there for Gibson Park. It is Van der Flair. Ireland have men both sides. Herring one of them. Good angle from the hooker. Just held up short. Gibson Park looks one way. May go the narrower of the two sides. Sexton is picked off. And away goes Freddie Stewart. But we're going to come back. We're going to come back. It won't count. Wow. Again. <laughs> we're having everything here. Ireland, we're bashing down the door. Nail after nail after nail after nail, and England were just hitting them out, tackling for their lives. Again, Gibson Park's options, although we can see Tack Furley wanting the ball from. Give it to me on the right, man, underneath the post. Then he goes. I want to check it. Marius, please. Hold on, we're checking something, Ryan. Looking at the the last track. Yeah, the last track. I just I just want to check it for be sure. Uh, uh, number four, ball is available, and he hold back the hand of the scrum half, and the scrum half uh. cannot play it. So, can, can we check, double check, please? Okay, we're going to Okay, television match official again, Marius Juncker, along with. So, I'm saying it's a toes, he's holding a back somebody to come. infringement here. A cynical infringement, professional foul, basically. Five meters from your line, you're holding someone back that probably could affect the. Well, whatever. We could be looking at a yellow, it's card. A yellow card if it if it's found. He just wants to check, obviously, because this is the game. Maro I love been... him. He, li he lives on that line, and that line is yes, positive or, 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 or negative. Here we go. So Gibson Park is in there, has his hands on the ball, and you. He... Well, he's dragged forward slightly. We talked about... Yeah, Scrum Half don't have the hand on well, the ball, right? Let's hear. Yeah, he had his hands on the ball and Matoje picks up his hand. I mean, that happens no, in so many kick. breakdowns. It's a penalty kick. Yeah, there's nothing clear and obvious there, uh, okay. uh, Jude. Nothing clear and obvious. Yeah, penalty is the decision and no more. Well, thank, thank goodness for Timo. Thank goodness for sensible referee. Because oh. I think he was, like you said, there was a t there was a card coming out. And the crowd don't like it, but I think when they get an opportunity to have a look at that one a little more closely, it's, it's, they'll accept that yeah. a penalty is probably the right decision. Well, most of them will. It's a pen, but you've got to silent and blue that again, because they should. They should just calm down a little bit. It's difficult because these boys are playing like... Not the good old phrase, wasn't it, when they win the World Cup, White Orcs. They're just on a different level this afternoon. They've had to be, just to stay in this game, the way, the way that Ireland started it. But this guy will know, just calm it, take three. We ain't played particularly well apart from those first bursts. They've got two tries. So then, opportunity for Ireland to get their first points. Oh, this second half. Jonathan Sexton restores Ireland's lead. England 15, Ireland 18. And a change for Ireland in midfield as Robbie Henshaw comes in and Bundiaki makes way. There he is. Robbie Henshaw, 56 international caps. Marcus Smith to the sky. Gary Ringrose secures possession. And that's a marginal win for Ireland because they've struggled to secure possession from restarts from England, particularly in this second half. After this goes Conway, Marcus Smith is there, deals with it, but he's put to ground by Henshaw. And that's, again, it's good from Ireland. Gibson Park, they hide okay. Marcus Smith on the left-hand wing. They don't want him in the midfield when the big runners are up against him. England are uh, trying to... Oh, yes, Joe Marler's on. Launch Bree's on. Yeah. Joe Marler comes in. Genge makes way. And there is Joe Marler. 
pack number 78, and in also comes Joe Launchbury, and it's Dombrant who makes way. Dombrant on from very early, and he's replaced by Joe Launchbury. Not often you see a substitute being Fourth substituted, injury. but there you go. Substitution. No, but again, talking about Marcus Smith, unfortunately, yeah. they, they hide him on this uh, on this left hand side. It was. That's the TMO getting involved again. Right, right <laughs> Marcus Smith had said, I pushed the ball in, it came off an Irish hand. There you go. If it's there, use it. Right ball. Uh, here it is. Robbie Henshaw. Uh, Marcus Smith got Inga. it away, and it comes off the boot Inga. of Andrew Conway. Yep. Jamie George, Maro Itoje, and the English Mall. A couple of English players going to grounds. Referee keeps his arms by his sides. Courtney Laws back stop. at his feet to Ben Youngs. Is it going to go high? No, it's not. It's going to be held on to. Marcus Smith around the corner. Henshaw stuck a leg out and it stopped Come the momentum of that ball getting away. Ireland put it through the hands in Conway. If that goes outside out the full, outside the 22. It is. It's another mistake from Ireland. An unforced error and it gives England the platform. Oh, the line out just outside the Irish 22. Time off. Dealt with it well to there. Yeah, do it, please. Conway having put in two crackers. Well, on the line, that yeah. wasn't what they needed. Ireland going to make another change. Conor Murray, vastly experienced. Conor Murray comes in for cap number 95. Jameson Gibson Park makes way. The two of the best box kickers uh, oh. around now. So <laughs> have a guess what we're going to see for the next. 13 minutes, but it is the right, it's the right way to go. Exit strategy from both sides at the moment. It's attack strategy from England, though. Jimmy George, but Ireland gets the hand on us. We'll confirm who. I think it was Tag Burn. No, no, back, back. Murray. Back the line. It'll be yeah. more deliberate. Use it. And with Gibson Park at nine, and into the air it'll go. And that one is a competition that's won by England, as so many of those competitions have been all evening. Marler. Furlong stays down and allows Youngs to complete the kick. And the mark call by Conor Murray, crowd urging the referee to have a look at something over there, but there's a lot of urging going on. Big boot of James Lowe, left boot. Finds touch in England. Want to play, and they want to play quick rugby. Freddie Stewart. Forward comes Hugo Keenan again, and he's done really well. Hugo Keenan turns defence into attack for Ireland. Sexton, Robbie Henshaw, back inside. Etoje gets his hands to him. Launch free gets to burn Go Murray. Left. To kill coin, tackle from Stewart. Murray, burn back inside. Kalen Doris, Doris is away. Kalen Doris for Ireland. Is this the game? No, it's not. Murray can't hold it. Much like Jonathan Davis last night for Wales, when the line seemed to be at his mercy and all the hard work was done, the final Stop. pass isn't held. And on we go. Great break from Ireland. Stop. England hanging on in that moment. Low with a kick downfield. You cannot take your eyes off this. You simply cannot. Stop, drop. Conway, gobble that one up. He'll go for a third. 50 22. This time the ball bounces away from the line. Conway goes after it, but it's dealt with. And it'll be a dropout. Oh, my word. Again, England forwards, players, Marcus Smith said, trying to everyone calm down. That was the game, it was the Jonathan Davis moment. From Toby, Toby, should say, Tolupi Falatel back inside. Whether he actually would have got there at the Arms Park last night, doesn't really matter, but I tell you what, whoever dropped that, was it? I'm never going to get anywhere near. Come on. I think it was Conor Murray. It was Conor Murray. Murray. Kenny Doris is back inside of Conor Murray. If he catches it, he does score. That's all I know. Now this is going to be a big one. Possible. Robbie Henshaw gathers steps. 
He uses strength to get Ireland going forward. Jack Noll just slows it down enough. Sexton, Ireland beginning to string a few passes together in the last two or three minutes. Murray again, Ian Henderson. Sexton on that loop of his. Well, name it after him, you know. Burn. Sexton once more. Keenan getting his hands on the ball a lot more. Ring Rose, Conan, low, James Lowe. Into the 22, Ireland go, Lowe fighting for every inch. Ball protected by Conan, Ring Rose will play scrum half. Herring takes it up, Laws makes the tackle. Ireland coming again, England sticking to the defensive duties once more. Sexton, Van der Flair, two white shirts there, willing to put themselves in the firing line again. Henshaw, Elliot Daly makes the tackle. Conan, again England's defensive line make all the right reads and Ireland just shovel it across and Lowe is asked to carry once more. Murray, Van der Flair. It's a battle of wills as much as anything else right now. Into the 22, Ireland go. Sexton. 12 phases, Ireland go through. And there's a gap there. And Ring Rose feeds it on to Andrew Conway. Cross comes Daly. No is there as well. Up to the English five metre line. Murray is there. Ireland are there. Jack Conan. Is that the one that seals the deal? In the end, England just ran out of ability to continue to make tackles. And Ireland built the phases and eventually found the space. Well, they've been run off their legs, England. So stoic for so long. Again, Ireland have actually started playing now as they did at the start of the game. I've got to say, I think it was, is it Keenan that actually just held that ball up, held that ball up and popped that ball through. And then it just comes out and again, it's a matter of numbers this time. The dam has split, the dam has broke. Ireland get through, and I don't think England are coming back from there. Conan, Conan the British Lion, on the bench. Again, I did look at the benches, I think a bit more experience. Obviously on the Ireland bench, that first start celebrating. That's a straight line for once England couldn't, couldn't actually force a dominant tackle to stop them in there in this stride. Johnny Sexton now who knows how important this kick is. He'll take every moment that he can. <laughs> His 104 test caps would suggest yes he will. He knows how to play this game, whether it's in the mind or on the pitch. Well, this old championship has served up another fantastic main course, hasn't it? It never fails to entertain year in year out there are moments of magic and for a variety of reasons this one will go down as a really engaging encounter not done yet but wow what a 74 minutes or so we've had it's had a little bit of everything as Jonathan Sexton looks to add another two which he does and Ireland have a cushion 25 points to 15 Ireland with a lower bonus point, they'll take the victory. You would have thought that they'd have had probably six, seven tries the way they started this game. But again, now they're just thinking about exit. Go, 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 and Henderson's experience there. Nothing came up against him. Drove the ball. And now with Murray's box kick and his experience, I'm sure this will go up into the night sky. Absolutely, Ireland will very much have bonus point on their mind with next weekend to come as Herring grabs a hold of it, not sure that wasn't forward, but on we go, Sexton holds on to it, Tyg Byrne straightens the line, and all of a sudden Ireland have found the gears that they've lost since the opening ten minutes, Ringrose probing, probing steps, and is put to ground by the ever-willing and able Courtney Laws, ball doesn't go to hand, so Ireland find themselves back on the halfway line, Robbie Henshaw, and they get the penalty. And they'll calm things down, and this will be popped into the corner. And I think it's well, it is within Sexton's range, but he won't he'll probably have a go, take another minute off the clock. Yeah, they need that try, they know they need that try ahead of next weekend of England's 
Well, they've been looking for England to do them a favour now <laughs> and, <go to> <laughs> and win. Yeah, but you're Ireland, right, Ireland plays Scotland yeah. before that game next week, so France will know. Well, simply a win for France, a Grand Slam next week. That's what they'll be after. But should England go after it? Well, Ireland could, if they get a bonus point, get within two points. But you said this Guinness Six Nations is the greatest, I think, rugby competition in the world. And I'm not just saying that, we've experienced something special here today. And again, these fans will go out there, they'll be drinking a few pints later, arms round each other. All right, there might be a tear, yeah, oh, you should have won that, oh, you shouldn't have won that. And that's the beauty of this game. Inside the final five minutes, ten points to the margin so often in this game. It didn't look like Ireland were going to be able to put that sort of lead up. Now they look to close it out. The pick, the drive, and is it the try from Finley Bielham? It is. Ireland have a fourth try, a bonus point try. Five minutes ago, it seemed fanciful. Now they have the full set. Well, the Aussie, Aussie ball got a crop. In probably on the bench for Andrew Porter's, Porter's uh, injury has just done what I didn't think was capable, to be honest. Coming into this second half was get four tries for Ireland. They were just desperate to win this game, and it's been turned really in a couple of minutes. Conor Murray knows exactly what he's waiting. Put the man, the go forward man, low there. Get him on that ball. He's been a bit quiet this first, the second half as opposed to the first. Okay, I think it's just a pick up from the dreadlocked prop. Okay, thank you. And that is it. I can, I can officially say England aren't coming back from here. You can breathe now. You can breathe. Go on. Uh, it's been, it's been a terrific contest made by his team, finding a way to channel the emotion and the disappointment of losing Charlie Ols in the opening minute of the game and uh, fighting and scratching for every single yard and every single point control chaos from England at times drag themselves back into a game a game uh, up until five minutes ago you felt they could easily sneak but Ireland have shown a little bit of composure that was required and over goes the conversion, and all of a sudden it's 32 points to 15, and it's a bonus point win for Ireland and Twickenham. My producer told me they're braids, not uh, dreadlocks, obviously. But again, in the right place at the right time, and there you go. Faz jubilant. Again, he's had to work about it. You'll find out a lot about his place again this afternoon at Twickenham. But again, they've come through it. A bit like France last night at Cardiff Arms. I think both coaches will have learned an awful lot about their players from yeah. this one in England, despite the disappointment, and it will be a bitter disappointment, particularly with the scoreboard the way it is right now. Will no doubt have something to build on next week, and they will not hand the Grand Slam to the French with any ease. And it'll be up to 15 men. Correct. Stewart, Youngs, Marcus Smith. Courtney Laws. No, no way. Penalty England. Well, Andy Farrell will be delighted with the tries and the manner in which Ireland has finally found their feet in this one, but the penalties. Yeah, do it. 15 conceded by Ireland. Mm, that will be a real worry, the scrum in particular, as Joey Carberry comes into the game to close it out for Ireland. Jonathan Sexton will make way. Into the last minute. This year, uh, Jameson gives the part, yeah, named the Guinness Six good. Nations player of the match, uh, chosen by Lawrence Delalio for the host broadcasters here in the UK. And well, he's definitely been impressed with me. He, gets, he got the tempo when Ireland needed it. Yeah, he did, he got on that try for, uh, for Keenan. His box kicking was very, very good, I've got to say. I think Lowe probably uh, ran him a little bit close. But can England finish now? They can't, because it's not straight. That is it. No, it's not straight. It's been a whistle. 
Jamie Bonner is coming to the game here. for Jamie George and Hooker. What we do? Mark. No, no, yeah, we play. that will go down and not straight. Another whistle before, right? Conor Murray's asked, can we, can we just go off? Okay, we do we have to play? Do we have to play? There you go. Get it in, get it out. Kick it backwards. They'll remember this game, as the England players will. Not the results so much probably from England, but actually the heart and the fight. Again, it's a professional sport. The referee makes a decision and the correct decision. You can't do that until they change the laws. England go down to 14. One big glass scrum from England. Here it goes. Conor Murray to touch. And that's it. Ireland have done it. They've won at Twickenham. It took some, some time to find their way after a enormously brave and competent and able display by 14-man England. But in the end, they showed the composure and class required. And they come away, away from home, with a bonus point win on a final score of England 15, Ireland 32. And Dowie Morris, it's a game that I think the English fans will walk away from here despite the disappointment of the loss and feel there is a lot there to be proud of and a lot there to build on. And they will set a level of expectation for that kind of performance in Paris next week. Look, England should always be a strong side with the player, player power that we've got and the, the sort of 12 professional sides. My sort of doubt coming into this sort of game was, you know, are they going to play for the coach? They're under pressure, and sometimes I've seen them play out there and they haven't really given 100%, and I know these players are different to that. Today, that was a total different England. Sometimes when you go down to 14, that's it. It's a Hail Mary, you, there's only one way to go, there's only one way you can play this game. You've got to roll your slow, shake your sleeves up, and you've got to go full tilt and full bore at the opposition. That's what they did, and they, they frightened Ireland. Ireland were brilliant in the first couple of phases. Uh, two tries, they were running away with this game, and, you know, <laughs> To get someone sent off in the first minute, I know you, you train for these circumstances, but this is a big game. Andy Jones called it a semi-final. This is a big game between, and you go straight away, you're down to 14 guys. You know, as I said many times, Faz, Faz will know a lot about his players, more about his players, and I've got to say England will, and they've got to carry on from this. They've got to go to Paris next week and really, really give it a go. Well, England will head to Paris and Ireland will head home for their final game against Scotland. Let's hear what the man of the match has to say. Jameson Gibson Park is pitch side. Well, Jameson, first of all, many, many congratulations. I'm sure there's a jumble of emotions going through your mind at the moment. What's the one at the top? Uh, I don't know, probably relief, to be honest. Um... We knew it was going to be a massive challenge coming here this week. It's one of the toughest in world rugby, and uh, credit to England. I mean, down to 14 men, and uh, as we expected, they, they put up a massive fight, and a kudos to them. When they lost Charlie Yules and then James Lowe went over for your first try, I guess there was a sensation that it's not going to be easy, but it's going to be easier than we were expected. It didn't pan out that way, did it? No, not at all. Um, we all know that teams, when they get down to 40 men, they tend to lift a little. You know, I've been on teams where exactly that has happened, and uh, sure, look, that's how it played out today, and, and they stuck in it for the for the whole for the whole fight. But uh, thankfully, we came out with the, with the with the points. What was being said at moments when there was a pause in play, and you were looking at each other, thinking, "What is going on?" What was being said that enabled you to steady the ship in those dying moments? I suppose staying calm was the main one. I mean, look around you. There's 80,000 screaming fans. It can be tough to stay calm, but. I, <laughs> but, uh, but I think we managed to throughout and uh, come away with the win, so we're delighted. You've got the win, that's the important thing. The championship is still within your grasp. You've been England, now you need England to do you a favour. Yeah. yeah, please God, but uh, anyway, we'll see how it pans out next week. Well, look, it was just one of the great matches to watch. Thrilling entertainment and to come away as the Guinness player of the match. Many congratulations to Thank you. Thank you very much, appreciate it. Well done. Martin Bayfield answering or asking the questions and making the point uh, that it was a great game.